At Forever Paws Animal Shelter, our mission is simple. Place these valued animals in loving homes. Forever Paws Animal Shelter, giving animals a new leash on life. Let's talk for a minute about proper grounding and electrical circuits and why thinking about grounding schemes both inside individual pieces of equipment such as guitar amplifiers and among many pieces of equipment such as in a studio or office is important, especially if you're trying to troubleshoot or prevent noise caused by electromagnetic interference. First, let's talk about what exactly we mean by ground. The term ground is often conflated to mean either circuit ground, chassis ground, or earth ground but these are not the same thing, so don't confuse them. Circuit ground is best thought of as a zero reference point for potential energy or voltage inside an electrical circuit. This circuit ground is usually attached to the chassis ground at one point or several points in a star configuration, and the chassis ground is connected to earth ground at the star's central point and connected to the actual earth through a pole driven deep in the ground outside your home or office. All free electrons, such as the ones found in electronic circuits, ultimately want to get to earth ground. Any buildup of free electrons will together form a potential energy known as a voltage. Anyone who has taken a physics class might remember the concept of potential energy. This concept is probably most clearly represented by the apple hanging on the tree above the head of the unsuspecting Isaac Newton. The apple has a potential energy that is a function of its mass and its distance above Isaac's head. If the distance of the apple above Newton's head is increased, the potential energy increases. This increase in height and thus potential energy is like an increase in voltage inside an electrical circuit. Conversely, if the apple is lowered closer to Newton's head, the potential energy between them is decreased. This can be thought of as a lower voltage in an electrical circuit. In this example, Newton's head could be thought of as the circuit ground, and the apple's potential energy could be thought of as some positive voltage above his head. Now let's imagine our apple tree and Newton are both high up on a mountaintop. The potential energy between the apple and Newton have remained the same, but now the potential energy of both relative to the valley floor have increased. While Newton's head might still be thought of as our circuit ground or zero point in this circuit, there is now a potential energy between Newton's head and the valley floor below, which could be thought of as earth ground. The only reason we really care much about earth ground is for safety. If you imagine instead of apples falling, there are bolts of lightning, you don't want to be the conduit connecting this lightning to earth. So instead, what we do with our circuits is surround them in a cage or box that is a conductor. Then we ideally make one solid connection from circuit ground to the box, also called chassis ground, and then we make one more solid connection between this box and actual earth ground. In this way, even if the voltage got accidentally discharged to the box while our bodies were in contact with it, the free electrons wanting to get to earth ground would find it far easier to go through this good, solid, low impedance connection to earth rather than going out of their way through your relatively higher impedance body. Now, if we look inside of a typical guitar amp, we'll see that there may be more than one point where the circuit ground connects to the chassis ground. In the case of our Ampeg, these connections were made from the factory at the capacitor can, at the input jacks, and also at the output transformer, not shown here. There was no direct earth connection. The center taps for both the 6 volt and B plus windings were connected to the capacitor can. This kind of situation can be okay unless in the process of connecting our grounds to multiple points, we inadvertently set up what's called a ground loop. A ground loop can be thought of as multiple paths electrons can take to get to earth ground. In this case, the input jacks were connected to both the chassis and the ground rail on the board, creating a loop. When electromagnetic waves or even a permanent magnet are moved in proximity to this loop, a voltage is induced in the loop, creating noise at the same frequency as the frequency of the wave or motion of the permanent magnet. This same principle is used in guitar pickups to generate the notes of a guitar. Here, the mains transformer was the source of the hum with its 60 cycle 120 volt 
AC signal being induced into the nearby ground loop and heard as a 60 cycle hum. The same situation can occur in a studio with ground loops. Studios can have many pieces of equipment all with their own ground connections. Ideally, all chassis grounds for all equipment should be connected to a single outside point or piece of gear, and that point connected to earth ground, thus preventing nasty sounding ground loops in the studio, which can be hard to track down. 